for people Delos Living. What is yes. this about? Well, this is a wellness real estate company looking to push this envelope in sustainability beyond uh, environmental thought and into human or biological considerations when we build things. So infusing spaces, uh, homes, offices, hotels with preventative medical intentions through the way we design. So what would be an example of something like this? Is it natural sunlight? Is it uh, better S air circulation? Sunlight what does this involve? Balance your circadian rhythm so you don't right. have jet lag anymore. Yeah, right. so there's circadian uh, lighting, uh, purified air, purified water, uh, elements of posture supportive flooring, uh, EMF shielding behind the walls. EFM, what is that? Uh, electromagnetic electromagnetic fields, yeah, blocking the harmful currents that run through the risers of uh, of, of, of uh, the, a building be behind Particularly for people who are travelers who get a lot of exposure to radiation because they're 30,000 feet up in the air. Well, a lot there of the you time. go. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And what about the actual real estate component of this? Where are you starting? With hotels? Well, we actually started with a residence with a okay. home, uh, five uh, condos here in New York City at 66 East 11th Street. Uh, Deepak actually will be, uh, be living in one of those homes. Uh, and we now have uh, almost 40 projects live in pipeline across offices, hotels, uh, schools. Um, a lot of different uh, uh, components of real estate. Uh, one the first one yes. should be hospitals, by the way, yeah. because right now hospitals are the most dangerous places <laughs> to be in. I think hospitals should be adopting this faster than anyone else. Uh, well, we're gonna, I want to get to that, but, he meant, but also Paul mentioned schools. And yes. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about your involvement with schools, because we mentioned this idea of resolving conflict. How do you get the people that build schools to change the way that they design them? Well, Paul is already talking to many schools yes. in the country. And there's a lot of interest in school boards, particularly charter schools, how children can focus better, learn better in a healthier environment. And when you combine what he's doing with simple practices like mindfulness and breath awareness, taking a short break of silence, you have a very ideal situation. What kind of reaction have you gotten from investors? I mean, are people... Outstanding. Really? Yeah. You know, you've got $150 trillion of real estate in the world, and, and, and we're infusing that with uh, uh, one of the fastest growing and arguably most important industries in the world, health and wellness, a $2 trillion a year spend. So the, the economic result is staggering. Are the hotel uh, owners, are they behind this idea? Because this sounds like it could be expensive. It's not as expensive as, expensive as you would think. We actually opened a wing of stay well rooms at the MGM Grand uh, and have since quadrupled that offering because of the economic success. We're achieving and about 25% And it's, it's marginal, the... Yeah. The yeah, the, the break-evens are quite low in terms of, you know, less than a two-month break-even if done right. You're getting 25% premiums on hotel, on hotel rooms. Deepak, let's talk now about health care. You mentioned hospitals, and it's not as if hospitals are the place where you ever want to be as a patient, of course, but they do not seem to be at the cutting edge when, it, when you think about they the wellness. They will be, because now the research shows very clearly that only 5%, only 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fully penetrant, which means we can influence most of our genes in a direction that creates homeostasis or well-being through lifestyle, eating properly, sleeping, stress management, emotional well-being, personal relationships, even professional interactions and environment are all connected to social well-being, financial well-being, career well-being and personal well-being are inextricably woven into each other. Paul, how did you start to become connected with the work of uh, Deepak Chopra? I was fortunate enough to have a lunch with Deepak uh, around, uh, I guess, four years ago or so, and uh, mentioned this notion of, of wellness real estate, and uh, the thought process took off from there. It was wonderful. And where would you like to see your next projects? Do you want to stay in urban areas, or do you want to branch out into more suburban locations? We've actually branched out. We announced uh, an entire township, uh, believe it or not, in Livingston, Mississippi, uh, that is committed to well-certify all the structures in the town. Uh, we've got a lot of conversations going on abroad. Uh, we feel this is uh, meant for anything with four walls and a roof. Well, there's a philanthropy component to it also. Yes. Well, Tell yes. us about that. Yeah, there is an element of uh, what we'll call altruistic capitalism, just introducing um, uh, a way to uh, give back by tying it to revenue revenues achieved from certification. So, uh, you know, when we think of sustainability in real estate, uh, environmental sustainability obviously is that 1.0 version. We're bringing human or biological sustainability uh, to the real estate movement. But if we can also tie philanthropy into a revenue engine, perhaps we can introduce or suggest philanthropic sustainability in real estate, which is very exciting. Is there a possibility that we could see a line of Deepak Chopra hotels anytime soon? No, I, <laughs> no? No. I think I'm happy just being a consultant and offering the content and the scientific input with other researchers.
All right, one of th maybe there's a book. Maybe there's one of Deepak Chopra's book in every room. There you go. There you go. Why not?